Hi there everyone. I had mentioned in the previous videos that if there was further interest in a follow-up third video on the NES and the controller that I'd be happy to do one. I've gotten a few comments that people were interested in another installation, so here we go. Before we get too much further, just want to go over a couple minor cosmetic and hardware changes I've made. I'm not going to open this up simply because that's a pain, and at this point, I really don't want to open it up anymore. It's, it's done, it's finished, I don't want to have to touch it. First of all, I put a little bit more hot glue around the edges here. Uh, I found that when I was pressing the controller button here, pressing it like this, it was getting a little too sunken in. didn't feel accurate anymore, so I fixed that up. It feels much nicer now. It's much better uh, than it was, and it's more true to the original, I think. And, and this is not a bad D-pad. It's really not. Second, I've gone ahead and added some lovely labels to the back. I've, uh, I've given it... Uh, Power, HDMI, and a Player 2 label. Let's see if we can actually get that to focus, you silly, silly thing. There we go. So we've added all that. Player 2 doesn't really do anything yet, but you could, in theory, plug in another USB controller and configure it. So that's good. Another thing interesting I found off Amazon was a way to plug in the Wi-Fi without getting out the full dongle. So this is the little Edimax dongle that I usually use. But it's uh, now got a little adapter on it that I found. And what this does is it's basically direct plug to the USB to a micro USB. So I thought that was pretty darn nifty, and it, it looks really good on the on the back of the unit. I'll show you really quick. It snaps in just like that, and then goes right into our friend Player 2 port. There we go. And that allows me to make any needed changes, upload games, etc., etc., we're going to unplug that for now because it's not really necessary. No. I really lost it. There we go. All right. Over there. You go. All right. Without further ado, let's see if we can't get this party started. Here it goes. So, HDMI is plugged in. And let's go ahead and then apply power. Five volts. Uh, I think this is only one amp. Might be two. Doesn't matter. We're going to see it boot up. Normal uh, aspect ratio is 16 by 9, since that's the capture card, and what most TVs are in, uh, in the world anymore. As you can see, single core Raspberry Pi. Here is the lovely splash screen. I grabbed this off of Google Images. Unfortunately, I do not remember who it's by. I like it a lot. I will find credits, and I will put it in the description, I promise. If anyone wants to download and credit where credit is due. I'm not much of an artist. Emulation, yeah, excuse me. Ah, emulation station logo. That's standard. I wish I could turn that off, but I can't. All right, now we're in. If you're at all familiar with emulation station, it uh, it boots up to the screen, and shows you all your systems. It usually also has the uh, RetroPie option now. As you can see, I've removed all that. I haven't added any other systems to this because I don't think that's necessary. I think it's fine with just the NES. Looks good. Quick review of the buttons. Normally, we would use right and left to toggle between the systems, but again, since we only have one system, it doesn't matter. And the main menu select does nothing. Start brings up the main menu. So a ROM scraper, sound settings for the UI. So a few metadata settings. This is going to have uh, a few random settings in it as well. I'm sorry, the metadata settings are there. This is going to be for configuring your controllers, so if you wanted to add a second player right there, like I mentioned before. And this will exit out. I don't recommend ever pressing that. And again, I'm trying to find a way to disable that because one of these days I'm going to exit out and I can't do anything and I'm stuck and it's going to be off. B goes back. And let's go ahead and get to the system. As you can see, we've got all our title information listed here. We've got uh, our ratings. We've got the uh, type of game it is, two players, one player, full description, as well as the title art. I've gone through the XML pretty meticulously and managed to scrape pretty much everything except 24 games out of the full 678 games available for the NES in North America. And I think there's a few here that are not even North American titles, but not too many since I wouldn't play them anyways. You can scroll up and down. Go through all the games. As you can see, a few of them don't have title art, but the majority of them do. 24 don't, as I mentioned. Let's go ahead and uh, show how to skip to a letter. We'll press the select button. 
from here we can jump to a letter. Let's go ahead and jump down to S and take a look. All right. Now oh, we got a few games here we could certainly not play. Super Glove Ball. I don't think that's going to go so well. After all, it is used with the Power Glove. It's bad. So bad. No one wants that. Now, let's go down to a crowd favorite. Everybody knows Super Mario 3. Let's go ahead and start it. Press A to start it. Loads this screen, which is your option screen. We're going to press a button here. Now this has various emulator options. Let you pick the emulator, the resolution of the emulator, a few other small things. Nothing spectacular, but uh, I've chosen to keep it as authentic as possible. We're keeping it in 4x3. We're keeping it at 320x240. Once you've got all that selected, and again, this is entirely optional, we're going to go to launch. And we started the game. Start and start. Sorry if it's a little loud. I'm still working on the audio levels, but uh, let's play a little Super Mario 3, see if I can not uh, die horribly here. Better not die horribly. All right, we managed to get a mushroom. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, not dead yet. Not dead yet. Okay, let's just avoid the turtle. Hop it. Hop it. Here. Oh, hello. No, 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 I, 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 oh, okay. Mushroom, no, don't die, don't die. Okay, we didn't die, we didn't die. We're gonna just pop the hole here. Okay, we're over. Over again, one more hole. Avoid the plant. Fireball. Missed the fireball. Alrighty. Oh, shoot. Alright, that was a hole. Alright, that didn't go so well. That's okay. I'm going to apologize. That's just the uh, lag from the capture card. Not much I can do about that, unfortunately, but you get the idea. Exit out of the game. Start and select at the same time. Alright, we're back out. So, let's go to another team favorite. Let's go select. Now, what would this be under? Would this be under L or S? Sorry, not S, T, T. Let's go T. All right. So, of course, I'm thinking of the world-famous Bart versus the Space Mutants. Because who doesn't love Bart Meter versus the Space Mutants? Okay, I'm kidding entirely. That's a terrible game. I, it's funny because I used to play it as a kid. We had it on the NES. I remember playing it with my cousins at Christmas, and it was awful. But you know what? We're not going to play that. Nope. We are going to go up to everyone's favorite. Legend of Zelda. Let it go straight into the game this time. All right, and there we go. Time screen. As you can see, the colors are accurate. The screen looks fantastic. And even at 320 by 240, you don't really know it. And the scrolling credits commence. The Legend of Zelda. Many years ago, Prince Darkness Ganon stole one of the tribal. I'm not going to do that. Although I've always wondered, many years ago, Prince Darkness? Wouldn't it be Prince of Darkness? I'm, I'm not sure where they're going with this, but nonetheless. I played this a couple times, so obviously there's already a game loaded in here, so. I've already got the sword. We can go up and kill this one. I want to say Goombas, but they're definitely not Goombas. What are these things? They're, they're Skinny Rocks? I don't think they have a name. I really don't think they have a name. It plays pretty well. It's, the frame rate's actually better than what you're seeing here. The capture card's just lagging a little bit. Due to the fact we're, uh, doing this on the laptop is a little bit stubborn. So I'm back to the HDMI, but it seems okay. Hey, we got our sword back, but, uh, can we make it a level one? Can we make it a level one? Can we make it a level one? Yes, we're gonna make it to level one. And in the tree. Sure. Yep. Alright, and we're in. Oh, yes, that's some good music. Alright, we're set. Anyways, but that's Zelda for you. Now I've set this up so when you're ready to power it off, you can obviously go here, shut down. That is the preferred method. It does safely shut down the system, although I've unplugged power from this thing probably a hundred times at this point. It doesn't ever seem to corrupt the file system. But I'd always recommend that you do use shutdown on these simply because if you don't, you certainly risk damaging it. You, yeah, you risk damaging your SD card most of all. But uh, 
and you don't want to have to fix that. It's a pain. You're going to have to open it up. You're probably going to have to get the SD card out. I don't recommend it. If anyone's interested in one of these back cases uh, and you don't have a 3D printer handy, I'm more than happy to print them for people at a nominal price. You know, I'm not going to gouge you or anything, I'm, and I'm certainly going to charge less than any commercial 3D printer. If you're interested, uh, give me, uh, you know, uh, throw me a message on YouTube or, uh, or throw me an email. I'm more than happy to, uh, to give you some pricing. Uh, I will say I'm not going to normally epoxy coat this and give it this nice shiny back. By default, that does cost a little more. Again, I'm happy to do it, you know, for, for a reasonable price. But again, if you have any interest, just get in contact with me. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I've got uh, some more videos planned on some other Raspberry Pi projects, and I've got a few more very compact computers that I received recently off the Kickstarter that I'm going to have some videos on pretty soon, so stay tuned to the channel. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.